Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, maximum total importance of roads. The idea is we're given a graph like this one, it's gonna have N nodes. It's also gonna have some undirected edges that do not have any weights associated with them. So all edges are pretty much symmetrical. The idea is that we want to number these nodes from one to N. In this case, we're given five nodes, so N equals five. But we wanna give them a numbering and we have to use every number from one to five and we wanna do it such that we maximize a certain sum. Now we're gonna calculate that after creating the numbering and basically for every single edge, the edge is gonna have a value. The value for that edge is basically gonna be however many uh, edges the node on one side has. You can see that this node has two edges and how many edges does this node have? Well, it has three edges. So therefore this edge gets a value of six. Now we could do that for every single edge. I'll just quickly do that. This one has one and one, or actually this side is three. So three plus one, that's gonna be four here. This one is gonna be two plus three. This one is gonna be two plus three as well. And then this one is gonna also be two plus three. And then this one is gonna be three plus three. So that's six. And then every single edge is gonna have a value associated with it. And the value for each edge is gonna be simple. Just take the number we assign to each node that this edge is attached to. Each edge is of course only gonna be attached to exactly two nodes. We assume there isn't like a self loop or anything like that. But so this one, of course, is gonna be six. This one over here, just take five plus one, and then we get a six. And you could do that for obviously every single edge. It's not too difficult to do. So for this one, you do seven. This one, you get seven as well. This one, you get eight. So after that, you take all these numbers, add them together, and I'm pretty sure we will get 43, assuming that I calculated these correctly. So we're trying to maximize this number. Now, with an example like this one, it might not be obvious what the solution is, but the solution is actually pretty simple. So let's look at a slightly different example, a smaller one. Suppose we had a graph like this one. So we need to assign a number to each of these, and let's just say for simplicity, we do zero, one, two. Now, we didn't have to do it this way, but let's see what the result is now. This edge is gonna be zero plus one, it's just gonna be one. I'll make it green. This one is gonna be one plus two, so this one is gonna be three. So the total is gonna be four in that case. Now, if I had done it slightly differently, if I had actually made this one two and this one one, then here, for a sum, we would have gotten two. And here, for a sum, we would have gotten three, and then the result would have been five. That's greater. So why was the result larger in this one? Well, look at the problem. Like, look at what we're doing. How is an edge getting values? Because obviously, we're trying to maximize the sum of all edges. So how can we make every edge have as big a value as possible? Well, ideally, we wanna be greedy, don't we? Like, we want to assign this node a value of two rather than zero rather than one we want to give this node a value of two because this node is connected to multiple other nodes therefore it has multiple edges and therefore if we give this a two that two is going to be passed down to these two edges that's not going to be the case if we were to give it a one because then we'd get a smaller value to these two edges. And obviously this one is only gonna go here, this zero is only gonna go here. So that's why we want to be greedy and we can do that basically by giving the nodes that have the most edges the largest value. So in other words, we can map each node to its edge count. So if we did that for this graph over here, we'd get something like this, pretty simple. And then we would want to go through them in sorted order but we want to go through them based on the edge count. Like that's what we want to sort by. So if you were to take this and sort it based on edge count, you'd obviously get zero and two first and then one because it has a larger edge count. So something like this, maybe zero, two, one. But that actually doesn't matter too much because we don't literally have to assign a label to every single node or at least we don't need to know which node is assigned which label. Because remember, what we're trying to do is maximize that sum of like the edges. So when we're going through these here, these are the nodes themselves, but underneath that, I'm gonna put the edge count. It's gonna be one, one, and two. So if we were to go through these in sorted order, 
We want to say that this one is going to get a label of zero, and then this one is going to get a label of one, and then this one is going to get a label of two. So that's pretty much what we've drawn up here. But if we want to know how much that's going to contribute to the total, think of it this way. Like for here, node zero, we're giving it a label of zero. So basically to the one edge that belongs to this node, we know it has one edge because of down here. This zero is going to be contributed to that one edge. Now, obviously, zero doesn't do anything, but if we go to the next one, it's going to get more interesting. So two, we're going to give it a label of one. And that one is going to be contributed to the one edge that belongs to two. So the result so far is zero, like we're trying to maximize this total. So far, it's zero, but now we've incremented it to one because this one is going to go there. Lastly, we're at the last element, this node over here. We're going to give it a label of two because that two is going to contribute to this edge and this edge. We know that because this node has two edges and we can obviously see that here. So in other words, the equation that we're doing is whatever label this node got multiplied by how many edges that node has. So this is going to be a two times two, that's four. So add four to the result and we get five. So that's the idea behind the solution to analyze the time complexity. We're not doing any sort of traversal on the graph, but what we are doing is going through all the edges, going through all the nodes, and obviously sorting is going to be the bottleneck in this case. So sorting, let's say there's n nodes, is going to be n log n. Space complexity is going to be bounded by this. That's, let's say, is going to be big O of n. I think we could be a bit more precise when it comes to this because this is obviously the time complexity of sorting n log n. But let's add a plus e here because the number of edges could technically be larger than n log n. In the worst case, the number of edges without duplicates could be n squared. So technically, the time complexity, to be more precise, is n log n plus n squared. But that's only in the worst case. And obviously, this is dependent on the number of edges. So I think it's more accurate to say plus e. If the number of edges is relatively small, it won't matter. And one last asterisk I want to mention with the solution is that it's technically possible that some nodes might actually not be connected. Like we might have a node here that does not actually connect to the graph. So in other words, over here, it's going to have zero edges. So just to deal with this, I'm actually going to use an array here rather than a hash map, just because we don't want to skip the nodes that have zero edges. Like we would still want to assign this a label and probably the smallest label because it doesn't actually have any edges. So we'd want to start here and then give this a zero and then continue from there. It's just a little bit easier to do with an array because with a hash map, the key three would not even exist here. So with an array, we'll have every single key. So to code this up, there's two main phases. One is just getting the count of each node, like the edge count, how many edges does each node have? That's not too difficult. We'll just do something like this, n1, n2 in roads. And then basically for each of these nodes, n1, let's increment it by one. And let's do the same thing for the second one. Then we're gonna do the second phase of the algorithm, where first of all, we're gonna make sure that these are sorted. So let's sort edge count. And they'll obviously be sorted based on the count, like the number of edges each node has, because we don't care about the original node at this point. So we're just going through these in sorted order. The edge count is what we care about. And so for count in sorted, for each of these, we want to add to the result, not just the count, but we actually want to multiply the count by whatever label that we're giving it. So I'm going to call that label. Initially, it's going to be set to one. And this makes me realize that I kind of had a mistake in the drawing explanation. When we're starting the labeling, we're going to go from 1 up until n. So the nodes in this problem are numbered from 0 to n minus 1. I think that's what was confusing to me. I'm sorry about that. So when we're actually doing the labeling, we want to start this label at 1 rather than 0. So that's the one little thing that you'll have to keep in mind. So here, we're going to take the count and multiply it by the label, just like we did earlier. So label multiplied by count. So that much is consistent with the drawing explanation. The only thing is that we're starting at one, not zero. Now we should probably declare the result before we start to use it. So let me go ahead and do that. And let's go ahead and return the result as well. Now there's just one last thing, our label, we wanna increment it by one each time. Since we're going through these in sorted order, we can't really do that in the for loop. So down here, I'm just gonna increment label by one. So not a lot of code here, 
That's usually the case with greedy solutions. As you can see on the left, it works and it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.